Sheila, Ronnie, and Debbie. Three young children, happy school was over for the week and only one week to go before our summer break commences. Weather was great that Friday, May 28th, 1971. The high was 66 and the low was 52. The sunset was at 8.45 p.m. and beautiful through the trees and reflecting on water. The morning rain felt like angel kisses, ending at 4 a.m. with no accumulation. Martha went by her middle name, Sue, was 27, and her husband, Claude Taylor Shelton, was 10 years her senior, felt their older, oldest child, Sheila, was capable enough to look after her younger siblings while they went and saw some friends. Claude was a highly valued family man who was also a valued and dependable employee, working a solid 10 years after serving in the U.S. Navy. Furthermore, they were one payment away from owning their home in Corbin, Kentucky, and at last count had $600 cash in the kitchen. It was a rather substantial sum. Today, it would be worth $4,300. When Claude and Sue returned home on 18th Street near the Daniel Boone National Forest, they tucked their children in. Before falling asleep, Sheila could hear her father through the wall asking her mother, are you going with me or are you going to stay here? The door shut and silence lingered after hearing two car doors shut and their white 1967 Ford Galaxy 500 with Kentucky license plate 937944 pull away. Welcome to Adventures Here. This channel is dedicated to missing people who are missing with a vehicle. In the process of creating this database, we are creating a volunteer sonar search and recovery dive team to search for the people featured on our channel. Our services are free of charge. We ask you to consider subscribing, watch our content, and help spread awareness of our endeavor. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline can be reached by dialing 988 or one 800 Two seven three eight two five five. Morning came soon when Sheila realized her parents weren't home. She phoned a neighbor. By Sheila's voice, one could tell it was out of character for the children to fend for themselves for an extended period of time. The neighbor phoned the police, who promptly came to help the young children. Sheila shared her parents just ran up to the truck stop about five miles away. King's truck stop sounded rather luxurious for a small town in America. Its amenities included a restaurant, barber shop, roomettes, a TV lounge, general merchandise, heavy duty truck repairs, a wrecker service, and a money wiring service. Police looked for clues. Sheila said there was a jar in the kitchen with the $600 cash in it that was missing. Also noticed was the purse left behind and a paycheck that needed to be deposited. Police headed up to the truck stop to to talk with the employees. No one remembered seeing them. A search in the area woods nearby revealed nothing peculiar. It's unclear what happened to the children and the end of the, at the end of the school year, if they would stay with friends and finish the year out, or if they were immediately, immediately sent to stay with Sue's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Conley Hunley in Knoxville, Tennessee. Since Claude and Sue's disappearance, Sue's mother has passed away on Mother's Day over a decade ago. Their children provided DNA samples to be reconciled against unidentified remains. Some questions that were lingering in my mind when I'm reading about this. Were the truck stop employees interviewed the same ones who were on duty at the time around when Claude and Sue should have arrived? Why didn't the children get sent to Claude's parents who were only a half hour away in Williamsburg? Did the $600 cash play a role in their disappearance? Some other questions that I had. Um, would they, if they did make it there and they got food or gas or the money and wiring service, did they just drive around and talk alone where they couldn't be heard through the walls? It's unknown if Sheila was in a deep enough sleep, sleep where she may have heard a car pull back up could her parents have returned home only to leave again before the children woke up did sheila see the money after arriving home from school could sue have done something earlier in the day with it and sheila just not realize the kentucky police department is investigating they can be reached at 606-878-6622 their case number is 11c 146 
The places I'm going to mention here in a minute are shared with my blessing so Claude and Sue can be reunited with their family, regardless who higher powers work through. The description box has our email address if you'd like to share insight on any cold case, know someone missing with a vehicle and would like them featured on our channel and searched for, or to donate equipment. The video here you're watching with of Google Earth has a measurement from our current best starting location, which is just Corbin, and it'll go out to possible search areas. We tend to focus on bodies of water within five miles of their last known location and within five miles of their destination. If an area has been heavily searched, we may expand the search area, but please keep in mind that accidents tend to happen closer to home. So I had a few other generic questions. Um, was there any road construction in the area that had detours that may have taken them through unfamiliar areas? Did either of them have any health issues? Uh, if they were diabetic, epileptic, had a concussion, cardiac issues? Uh, let's see here. What was the place of their last verified transaction? Was there one at the King's truck stop or was it earlier in the day? The children could look at um, bank statements, what have it, if they wrote a check or if they used a card. Uh, what time did they leave that night? What were the home and work addresses? Uh did Claude put in any time off requests? Did they prefer to drive on main roads or back roads? Was a car or a call put into AAA, a mechanic or car insurance in the day before or of? Uh, let's see here. So the areas I'd like to search, the first area would be the dam on Laurel River. That, I think that's like two miles from home. Might have been a nice place to sit out and overlook on the water. Uh, the Laurel River Lake. There's Little Laurel, Laurel River that runs through town. There's water at East State Highway 52. It's away from home in the area, but there's a substantial amount of water there. Uh, there's the Robinson Creek that runs along I-25. There's trees there in some of the parts, but 40 years ago, those trees might not have been in existence. So it's definitely worth a look into. And then that river that runs through town, it looks rather shallow on here, but we won't really know until we get to town. If you'd like to help Claude and Sue's family find them, please subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and ring the notification bell to receive progress reports. I'll let the video play out here a few more minutes so you can see the entire search area. If you see something I missed, please let me know in the comment section. Other dive teams may be able to get to them first, so it would be good for them to read these notes sections if anybody posts anything. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and remember that we love you.
Thank you.